How's it going you awesome bunch of bakers? Hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very unique project for you. We're gonna make cheese and then use the leftover whey to make bread. So let's get in the kitchen and get started. I'm not much of a cheese eater. My favorite dairy product is actually cottage cheese. And when I'm growing up, cheese wasn't a big part of my diet either. However, there is a type of cheese that I would always eat during the summer solstice festival back in Latvia. It is the classic Latvian caraway seed flavored cheese also known as Janusiers. It is extremely popular during midsummer, but it is available in most shops throughout the year. There are many different recipes and many different preparations for this cheese, and I'm not going to claim that this is the correct one, neither do I care. This is a super quick and simple recipe that my mother showed me while I was visiting her in the summer. It is pretty much fail proof, so it'll be a great introduction to homemade cheese. But we're not just gonna make cheese here. Whey is a byproduct of cheese making. It has many different uses, but since it is mostly water, I thought why not use it in a bread dough? So we'll make our own bread and our own sandwich topping. Two recipes in one. That is a pretty good deal if you ask me. So let's just get to it and see how it's done. Starting with the ingredients for the cheese. We'll need some full fat milk, some sour cream, eggs, salt and caraway seeds. And yes, this cheese contains eggs. It is the egg that gives it that soft, bouncy and moist texture. The sour cream that I'm using has a fat content of 18%. You can use lower fat sour cream or higher fat sour cream if you like. This is just a sour cream that I always get in the shop anyway, so I'm just using what's available to me. When it comes to the seeds, you could replace them with any other seeds that you like. But caraway is definitely what sets this cheese apart. It should taste of caraway. When it comes to the equipment, we'll need a pot for heating the milk, a couple of bowls, a sieve or colander for draining, we'll need scales, a temperature probe, a whisk and we'll need a cheesecloth. This is quite important. We'll need something very fine for straining the whey out and keeping the curds in. It is possible to find these in the supermarket. I ordered mine off Amazon and I have added them to my Amazon shop as well. You can find it linked in the video description below. This is what a cheesecloth looks like. It's just a very fine lint-free cotton cloth. Another piece of equipment that may come in handy is a jug, but it's not totally necessary. I'm just going to use it because it's more convenient. When it comes to making the bread, there are a couple more things that we'll need. I'm going to use my bread basket for final proofing, although you can make this as a freestanding loaf if you want to. We'll also need the dough scraper for mixing the dough, and we'll need something to slash the dough with. I'm going to use my razor, but a sharp knife or a pair of scissors will do too. And for baking, I'll use my Lodge cast iron combo cooker. It is the best way to bake a loaf at home. But again, if you don't have one of these, do not worry. You'll still get a great loaf of bread if you just simply bake it on a tray. Okay, with all the ingredients and all the equipment out of the way, let's get to it. Let's start by making the cheese. Combine the milk, salt and caraway seeds in a pot. Set it on the cooker on medium to high heat and leave it to warm up. Whilst the milk is warming up, combine the eggs and the sour cream and whisk them until smooth. You'll get quite a large piece of cheese out of this recipe and you can only keep it for around 3-4 to four days in the fridge. So if you're not going to manage to eat it all or to share it all, I'd suggest making half the recipe. Okay, once the eggs and sour cream have been mixed, let's check on the milk. Keep warming it up and stirring it occasionally until it comes up to 90 degrees Celsius or 194 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's up to temperature, take the sour cream and egg mix and slowly pour it into the milk whilst whisking continuously. This is where the jug comes in handy, but you can just as well pour it out from a bowl. Okay, once you've combined all the ingredients, Leave the mix to simmer for around 5 minutes. Nothing much may happen during the first couple of minutes. But once it starts bubbling and slowly boiling, you will see the curds separate from the whey. This is what it should look like. Chunky, milky liquid. First there will be small chunks, but after a couple more minutes, it will solidify. And once the timer goes off and you see the mix being nice and chunky, you know it's ready. If it's still a bit watery, leave it for longer. But mine is definitely ready, so now it's time to strain it off. Make sure you use a large enough bowl. You don't want to be standing ankle deep in whey after you drain it off. I think the trickiest part of this whole process is figuring out a good setup for draining off the whey. You want the colander to sit in a bowl but not touch the very bottom of it so that there is some space for the liquid to come out. Then you'll need to find something that will fit over the curd like a plate or a bowl which then can be weighed down with something heavy. We need to press this cheese to get all the liquid out of it. So get most of the whey out, reserve it for later Set up the colander in a bowl for draining, organize the curds so they're nice and straight, then place something on top that'll sit flat against it. And then finally, get something heavy to weigh it all down. I decided to use my baking steel, it is pretty heavy. And I can kind of balance it so it doesn't fall over. But it wasn't quite heavy enough, so I had to improvise. 
And this is the janky setup I ended up with. So we have a bowl, a colander, another bowl, baking steel and a heavy cast iron pot. Use whatever you can find. Just be careful so it doesn't fall over. Okay, whilst that's cooling down and draining, let's move on to the bread. For that, we'll need some white bread flour, yeast, salt, whole wheat flour, some flax seeds or linseeds, some of the leftover whey, and I decided to coat the loaf in wheat bran, just because I had some leftover from previous recipes. You can swap this for seeds, or just leave the loaf plain, it's up to you. Okay, when it comes to temperature control, my kitchen is around 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll need to let the whey cool down before we use it. I left it to cool down to around 24 to 25 degrees Celsius or 75 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. After mixing, the final dough temperature will go up by a degree or two. When it comes to mixing, there is nothing special about this bread. Combine the whey, the yeast, the salt, the seeds, the whole wheat flour, mix them all together, add the white bread flour, mix to a dough. Whey is about 93% water. So I did my hydration calculations according to that. Since the whey contains sour cream, it makes it slightly acidic, which works great for bread making because it tightens the gluten. This is a cold fermented dough, so straight after mixing, I'm gonna pop this in the fridge, chill down for 30 minutes. And we're going to give it a couple of folds at 30 minute intervals. After the second fold, we'll leave it a cold ferment for 12 to 24 hours, and then we'll shape it, proof it, and bake it. And whilst I'm getting on with that, let me tell you about some other uses for the whey, because there will be more whey than you will need for the bread left over. It's basically like slightly acidic and salty water, so you can add it to soups, stews, sauces, you can boil grains, pasta, or vegetables in it, you can add it to smoothies, or you can just straight up drink it. It does have a salt content of about 1%, and that is why the added salt for the bread dough is slightly less than usual. Let's check out the cheese for a second. This has been draining and cooling down for around 2 hours. And once it's done, it should be pretty solid. But it is not as sturdy as other cheeses. It is a bit soft and delicate. We'll leave it in the fridge to cool down completely. And that's where we'll store it too. Here's a fun fact for you. I mean it's pretty obvious, but whey protein is made from whey. So we could say that all our protein shakes are just a byproduct of cheese making. Okay, let's get back to the bread. I left my dough to ferment for around 20 hours. As you can see, the dough is not very stretchy. On paper, the hydration of this dough is 81%. But like I mentioned earlier, whey is only about 93% water. And the acidity makes the gluten nice and tight. Both of those qualities allow us to use a lot more liquid in the dough, while still keeping it very easy to handle and shape. So shape the dough into a nice little loaf. You can make it any shape, it's up to you. And of course, you could double the ingredients to make a larger one. After shaping, we need to coat the sloth in the wheat bran, or whichever coating you happen to choose. The method will be the same. You can do it on a table, or you can do it on a tray to avoid making a mess. Moisten the loaf with water using a wet hand, a brush, or a spray bottle. Make sure to wet the whole surface of it, top, sides, and bottom. Then dry your hands, pick the loaf up, and roll it in the topping. Make sure to cover every inch of it. You can use this technique for any other bread. You can do it for bread rolls, baguettes, anything that you could easily handle without distorting the shape of it will do. If you're gonna do the final proofing in a bread basket, make sure that the seam is pointing up. And of course, if you're gonna proof it on a tray, make sure the seam is on the bottom. The final proofing time will depend on the temperature of your kitchen. It took me around two hours at around 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit. During the final hour of fermentation, preheat the oven, 250 degrees Celsius, 480 degrees Fahrenheit, fan on and preheat your pan too if you're using one. Okay, it's been around two hours, we are ready to bake. We'll get the preheated pan out of the oven, make sure that we don't burn our table, remove the lid, set it to the side, invert the loaf on the bottom part of the pan, and then score it with a razor blade or a knife or a pair of scissors. Cut it from end to end at a 45 degree angle. Cut it around two centimeters deep, that'll be about an eighth of an inch. The next step is optional, but I decided to spray down with water using my spray bottle. The lid of the pan does a great job at keeping the steam in already, but a little extra moistening won't hurt. Okay, this thing is finally ready for the oven, so get the lid on and pop it in there. As soon as you close the oven door, turn the temperature down to 220 degrees Celsius or 430 degrees Fahrenheit. The first part of the bake will take 25 minutes. Once the timer goes off, take the pan out of the oven, remove the lid, and then place the bread back into the oven for another 10 minutes of baking. I decided to bake with the fan on because I wanted the crust to darken quickly during the final part of the bake, because the loaf spent most of its time under the lid and we only had a short time left to finish the bake. My reasoning is that I let it rise to its full potential at the expense of darkening the crust. 
but you know your equipment better than I do, so adjust accordingly. But there you have it. That's how you make homemade cheese and homemade bread using the leftover whey from making the cheese. Both of these recipes are solid on their own, but combined they make for an awesome project with amazing results. This will definitely not be the last time that we make cheese and use the leftover whey to make bread. I already have a couple of interesting projects lined up. Don't forget that you can post pictures of your breads and cheeses on our Flickr group. It is a great little community of bakers. You'll find a link to it in the video description. So do you think these recipes? Have you ever made cheese before? Let me know down in the comments. You want to see more days like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.